a big part of it is at the moment, I guess, is fear that perhaps at the moment an AI couldn't do that. So we were quite careful after we'd asked some sort of open text, is there anything that they wouldn't want AI doing? Um, the bot's then gone on and created a list of things that it thinks uh, AI might be able to do going forward. And it's put those out there and asked people, um, assuming it was capable of completing these kinds of tasks, which would you be happy for AI to handle for you? So it's got some quite mundane ones on there, which I guess lots of us are used to using, like things like turning your lights on and off or controlling your heating and something like Nest. Um, but it's also got things like booking appointments, monitoring my health, keeping track of my finances. And we see that sort of nearly half of the consumers we spoke to would allow AI to monitor their health. Maybe that's a hangover as people are starting to realize that actually their health is being monitored a lot anyway by things like Fitbits or even their phones. There is this sort of growing awareness that it's happening. Similarly, you see around sort of 40% would also allow AI to track and more specifically handle their money. So not just tell you you've spent too much, but also perhaps tell you stop spending or you need to put this money aside or actually I've just paid your bill for you and done this. So people are starting to break out from the norms of what you might think. Money was a really surprising one to us. We thought there's no way people are going to just say, sure, robot, go ahead, control my finances for me. But there is starting to be that sort of awareness. People think in time that will be something that AI can handle for them. So we talked about monitoring health, which is one thing. What we found, though, is that significantly less people would actually allow AI to make sort of medical diagnosis for them or even teach their children, which we referenced already. So it seems to be a kind of a weird dichotomy here when it's all right for you to monitor, but not necessarily to do anything about your health. Craig, I know you had some thoughts on this <clears throat> yesterday when we were chatting about it. Yeah, when you look at this list, you can see a lot of the things, you know, at the top, turning my lights on and off, turning my heating on and off. They're fairly, I guess, just general tasks around the day that having an AI involved is not going to cause any long-term damage or harm, right? So these are all things that are reversible, even with your finances. You know, if something goes awry with your finances, there's probably systems and people in place to rectify that that issue if needs be. Something like making medical diagnosis or even carrying out medical procedures, which we've seen in some comments, and teaching children, these are things that are going to be a lot harder to rectify if they go wrong, right? So I think people are quite happy to do things where potentially there's guardrails and human intervention set up and can be implemented but far less likely to actually fully trust an AI uh, with, with, with their well-being and things like that. And you see examples of this more widely, right? We were talking about self-driving cars, but yet this is probably quite an easy technological innovation, but people don't want to do it just because of that one time that perhaps one car goes rogue and drives off somewhere with someone in it. Uh, and it feels like people are far more happy to for something to put their hands in, although it might not be more efficient, put their kind of livelihood in, in the hands of an actual human rather than an AI, just because of that one potential time it might go wrong and forgiving themselves for actually doing that. 